Hello class, this is Marcella, and today we're going to be talking about uneven aged management. So this is a shift from our previous lectures where we've been talking about even aged or two age systems. So some goals for this class include to be able to find different parts of an uneven age management system, know the difference between selection and selective, and understand and be able to describe um, a single tree selection and a group selection system. So what is an uneven age stand? So we covered this definition way long ago at the beginning of class. So pause this lecture and write down what an uneven age stand is. So now to unpause the lecture, what is an uneven age stand? It's a stand with trees of three or more distinct age classes, either mixed or in small groups. We can also use the term all age stand um, with a stand of all or almost all age classes, including those of exploitable age, so those that can be harvested. Um, another term that can be subbed in with uneven age is multi-age, so, um, but for for our definition, what we're looking for, an uneven age stand has three or more age classes. So a parts of an uneven age system, and these should look very familiar. These, I'm, these, this question is gonna come up on your next exam, just it's going to be part of there. So uh, regeneration, tending, and harvest. These are three parts of any good silvicultural system. So this is the same as an even age system and a two age system, but what's different? So what's different? The big difference is with an uneven age system, we're never removing all the trees at any time or even over a relatively short time. So we're doing all these steps each entry. So each entry, each cutting cycle, and I'll get into that term in a second. We're regenerating, we're tending, we're harvesting. We're doing all three of those at once. So I mentioned this term a second ago, a cutting cycle. The cutting cycle is a planned interval between partial harvest and an uneven age stand. So remember in an even age system, we were talked about rotation. So that's from basically start to finish, so from regeneration to harvest. Whereas a cutting cycle is the interval between partial harvest. So there's a difference. Even age systems, we have rotations. Uneven age systems, we have cutting cycles. So what does this look like? So here is our even age system. We have, we just finished our harvest here. We're regenerating, those trees are growing. They've maximized their growth, we're going to harvest them and we start over. We see this rotation. In this time, we may tend our stand. Whereas in our cutting cycle, we're never harvesting all the material. We're never harvesting all the woods that's on the ground. So our stand grows, we may harvest it. It grows again, we may harvest it. So there's a difference in what's there and what we're doing. So not only during this harvest, we're harvesting those trees that are mature, whether that be financially, ecologically, however we define what is mature. We're harvesting those mature trees. We're also tending the immature class and we're focusing on regenerating this new age class. So what are some goals when we think of an uneven age system? I want you to pause the lecture and write down two goals for an uneven age system. So as you finish up writing, um, let's look at what some goals for uneven age management are. So some goals can include the sustained and regular yields of products and values from a stand. Um, so that's a really prominent goal of this is you're gonna have this kind of consistent yield. Um, there's also the stability of characteristics of forest conditions and structure. Uh, you have this full site utilization over a long run, and there's a regular replacement of mature trees with new ones. You also have the timely release of individual residual trees, and you have fairly stable habitat conditions and visual quality through time. So there's some, with uneven age management, there's a bit of consistency when we both talk about the financials, the ecology, 
um, the visual aesthetic so there's there's consistency the site isn't changing as drastically as when we we're talking about two age or um, clear cut or coppice systems um, so a big thing and a this this will be on your exam this will probably be a quiz question what is the difference between selection and selective and this is just something that you need to know and should kinda when you hear this word selective it kinda should be like nails on a chart chalk, chalkboard so selection selection is silviculture that's focusing in on the remaining trees promoting growth and regeneration selection we're taking the worst first so we're always looking to promote improve the stand. Selective, that just means we're selective in what we're taking. And generally it means it is a negative thing. So it's associated with culling or high grading. It's an exploitive practice. You're focusing on taking the best first um, and leaving the rest. And there's no thought of silviculture. So you're not focusing on your stand, you're not focusing on regeneration, and you're not focusing on tending. You are taking the best trees no matter what. So selective should just send chills up your spine. Um, selective is can be the equivalent of high grading. So that should really um, put you on high alert. Selection is when we're talking about silviculture. So there is a difference between these two terms. So again, this, this is something that's good. This is something that's probably going to show up on a quiz question the next class. So um, go over this slide again. So looking at selection systems, we can have uh, a single tree selection system or a group selection. And we're going to go into the details more, but just kind of looking at the overview, they kind of sound exactly like what they're talking about. Single tree, we're taking out individual trees um, with each cutting cycle. So each harvest, we're taking out individual trees, we're tending, and we're regenerating. Whereas with a group selection, we're creating groups or gaps. Um, we're creating these groups. We may be doing some individual tending um, in some of the more mature groups, um, but we're regenerating in groups, and that creates these variable different age classes. So what's the underlying part of a selection system? So each age class occupies an equivalent amount of growing space or horizontal crown area. And this makes the stand balance. And this idea of a balanced stand is something that is debated in the literature. Uh, but there's this idea that you have a balanced stand. So each cutting cycle, I'm going to kind of hammer this in again. So each cutting cycle, a forester is focusing on those three things, those three aspects that happen in each silvicultural system. We're harvesting those large trees, we're regenerating a new age class, and we're tending that immature age class. So those three things are happening each cutting cycle. So let's talk about some characteristics of a selection system. So again, we need at least three age classes. And one of the goals we talked about was to maintain this consistent or constant yield of forest products. How do we do this? So pause and write down one thought about how we could do this. So as you unpause, let's see if we have similar ideas. So one way we can do this is looking at diameter distribution. So um, in a previous class, we went outside. Uh, we measured some trees, and I also had to do some diameter distribution. And it's one way we can look at how growing space is allocated. And one of the key assumptions, and we'll talk about this more in class, larger diameter trees are older. So we're going to talk about this key assumption and how it doesn't always hold up. Those larger trees are not always older. So um, when we talk about uneven age systems, we, one of the traditional ways we can talk about an uneven age system is this reverse J uh, diameter distribution. And this reverse di J diameter distribution, so as foresters we like to describe what we're seeing, so it's a reverse J, um, so picture a J kind of flipped. And what we're seeing is that there is high amounts of trees, so the per number of trees or percent of trees is higher in these smaller diameter classes compared to these 
older diameter classes. And this is an example from an old growth forest in Chile. But we also see these kind of diameter distributions in northern hardwoods in the lake states. Um, they can be seen in other forests um, that are managed when in, using this uneven age system. So management options for an uneven age stand. So this, this management can be more complex. So you're balancing multiple species with different ecological tolerances. So you have to know your silvics. So in this example, we're looking at uh, the combination of beech, northern red oak, red spruce, yellow birch, and eastern hemlock. And that's just scratching the surface as the number of trees. So there is a lot of trees happening here. There's a, lot of, there's a large number of trees that we're managing, and they all have different silvics. So you have to understand all the silvics of your species that are occurring to be able to manage this system. So getting into a little bit of the history, so this has a very rich history in Europe, and it's used using different types of selection systems, and there's multiple different names. But the two, two big underlying ideas, two big underlying concepts include regulation and balanced age class structure. So what does that mean? So balanced age class structure. So this is, again, pure... This is this what we're talking about here may not always be implemented in management. This is more to get the idea, the theory, um, the base of this. So a balanced age class structure looks at controlling the portion of the forest area and stands of different ages. So we have multiple ages, right? For an uneven stand age stand, we need at least three ages. Let's say for this example, we want 10 age classes. So we have our percent of the area equals one over the number of age classes. So in this very simple example, 10 age classes, each one would occupy 10% of the area, 10% of the land. So if we want, if we need a minimum of three, each, each age class would represent approximately 33% of the area. So it's this idea of balancing the proportion of the area um, in these different age classes. So, um, let's talk about these different systems. So we talked about single tree and we're also going to talk about group selection. So a single tree selection is individual trees of all size classes. So all size classes, what I'm talking about is diameter classes from small to large are removed more or less uniformly throughout the stand to promote the growth of remaining trees and provide space for regeneration. So you have, you're removing trees from all diameter classes. So you're not just, you're not using a selective system where you're just removing those best, highest, biggest quality trees. No, you're removing trees uniformly. So you're taking out trees that are financially mature. You also may be taking out smaller diameter trees that to tend stand. So maybe there's a little bit of crowding. You tend it to release growing space. So you're removing trees across many diameter classes. So what does this do? Well, it creates small gaps. What kind of species are favored when we create small gaps? So think about, think about what's happening as we change, um, as we shift. So in a clear-cut system, we created these very large gaps, this extreme environment. What happens when we create very small gaps? What kind of species does that favor? So pause, Write down what you think. Go back to your silvics. Okay, so as we unpause, what kind of species does this favor? So shade-tolerant individuals. And remember, shade-tolerant, those individuals are tolerant of shade. They can regenerate in the shade. And this area that we're creating, this small gap, it's opening an area equivalent to the crown. So in this example, we see, okay, Say we're taking out this tree to allow maybe some tending for an additional tree. So we're only opening an area equivalent to the crown. So we're not opening it up that much space. And what this, what this kind of is built on is this idea of gap, deny, gap dynamics. So there's a change in space and in time in the pattern, frequency, size, and successional processes of forest canopy gaps 
caused by the fall or death of one or more canopy tree. And we observe this in unmanaged stands. We observe this in unmanaged system. As we walk through a forest, you notice maybe an individual tree blew down, maybe an individual tree died. So we see in these natural systems this idea of gap dynamics, and these gaps vary from small to, to larger. But there are some important differences. So with gap dynamics, it's estimated about 1% of the total stand area in any year. And this is spaced irregularly, um, both in time and in space. So in one year, maybe you don't have a lot of a lot of change. So maybe it's like 0.1 or 0.2. But another year, maybe you have a little bit more disturbance. You have a bigger impact. Maybe there's a little bit more of a windstorm or ice damage and you get breakage. And maybe you have 2%. Um, so it's spaced irregularly throughout the stand and also in time. And it's going to be larger or smaller depending on that disturbance. A downburst with wind might open up a larger group or gap compared to an ice storm. Whereas single tree selection, it's about 10 to 25% of the area during each cutting cycle. And these are regular intervals that are scheduled and the removal is regular. So that's, it's this very consistent. Again, we got back to those goals. This idea that there's this consistency in this, um, this process. So how long are our cutting cycles? How do we implement this single tree selection? So we generally have short cutting cycles, 10 to 25 years. And again, leave relatively small and dispersed openings and a fairly high residual density. So how is the environment going to change in a single tree selection? I want you to write down at least one way you think the environment is going to change in a single tree selection. So pause, write that down. As we unpause, let's look at what we've got. Let's compare. So limited reduction in root competition. Again, we're not creating huge gaps. We still have trees. They're still um, transpir transpiring. They're still using water. So limited reduction in root competition. We also have a small improvement in diffuse light. So we still have an overstory. We still have a midstory. So we still have trees in all these different diameter classes. So there's very limited increase in direct solar light. There can be some increase in diffuse light, so that light that's there. Um, so an example, just to give you an idea. So in one forest type, um, I believe this is a northern hardwood forest, to increase the light by 30%, you would need to remove 60% of the basal area. So we're talking about removing a large amount of the basal area for pretty marginal increase in light. And there's, in our single tree selection and our group selection, we're by no means removing this large amount of basal area. So again, remember, single, these selection systems, we're not removing all or nearly all of our trees, any cutting cycle. So there may be a small increase in soil temperature and nutrient release. And there's also a high amount of vertical and horizontal diversity and high structural diversity within the stand. So within the stand, again, remember our stand is our unit, so that includes we're going to have different diameter classes, we're going to have foliage in different canopies, so there's high diversity there. However, if we have this across the landscape, there's a consistency, so there's low diversity at a landscape scale. So group selection, a little different than a single tree selection. So trees are removed and new age classes are established in the small groups. So the width of the group can be twice the height of the tree. Um, they can be larger, they can be smaller. It all depends on um, what kind of species you're regenerating. So the ecological underpinnings for this is that some, some forests have this groupy, clumpy structure. So species regenerate in these gaps, and they're similar in age and diameter and height. So some forests um, just have this kind of clumpy structure. They, they create these gaps. There's these disturbances that naturally kind of create these gaps, or trees and insects and diseases create these gaps. So what are some differences between a group and single tree selection? So write down at least 
one difference between a group and single tree selection. So pause and write it down. So as we unpause, what are a difference? So we're removing a similar amount of basal area, but we're how we're allocating our growing space is different. So we're changing how we're allocating our growing space. So with a single tree selection, we're removing small individual trees across the stand. So we're allocating growing space across the stand kind of evenly because we're removing trees from all diameter classes. Whereas with the group selection, we're removing trees mostly because we're creating these gaps. There's still tending going on in the other age classes, but we're really focused on opening these gaps, creating growing space in these gaps. So let's talk about some group selection characteristics. So the level of light, nutrients, and moisture increases um, within this group space. So there's an increase in these groups. We can think of these groups as kind of mini clear cuts. There are many little clear cuts within this larger matrix. So the surrounding trees modify the environment. Um, so in a small gap, you're going to have more trees encroaching. So in a small gap, you're going to have more area where you have um, trees along the edge that are able to expand their crowns, expand into that gap. Whereas with a bigger gap, you have more interior space. So you have more space that um, is open and more um, extreme. So there's going to be um, greater changes within your gap. There's going to be greater variability within your gap. Uh, so that it can include in certain areas, you're going to have higher moisture content um, with more rapid decomposition um, that's releasing nutrients. So again, we talked about some of these aspects when we talked about a clear cut. So um, between group openings, the tending may change understory light sufficiently to recruit advanced regeneration of shade tolerant individual. So um, again, remember when we talk about a group selection, even though we're focusing mainly within the group, we still are tending um, the surrounding area. So we're tending these other groups, we're tending these other cohorts, these other age classes. So there can be recruitment um, of these more shade tolerant individuals. So we have our group selection, we have this idea of creating groups and so we may be focusing, this may be our newest group, so we opened up this growing space, but we're still tending in um, some of these more mature age classes. So how big of a gap? Well, we're still exploring that question, and that question is really variable um, depending on your site, your history, um, and they can vary from a quarter of an acre to an acre to maybe three to five acres. So there is a lot of variability of how big of a gap we want to do. And we'll see some examples when we go out with Aiken County land. Um, so they, they have been implementing these kind of group selections in some of their hardwood forests and have seen a lot of success with this. And we'll touch on this history of these forests and why, why a group selection is a much better option than a single tree selection. We can also talk about hybrid system and that, so yes, um, throughout this class we've grouped stuff into these categories, but Remember, we can have this range. So um, yes, we can put stuff into categories, but there is this range. And this hybrid uneven age system is this range of options. Um, includes many tools from your toolbox. So forests are not uniform. So you're not maybe you're not just implementing a single tree selection or a group selection. Maybe you're implementing something of both. So creating skips and gaps, creating patches and single and using individual tree. So it's this combination of single tree and group selection depending on your site. Focusing on single tree selection for your more shade tolerant individual where a group selection or gap with your more mid tolerant in, or, or intolerant individuals. So with that, this is the end of kind of this introduction to our uneven age systems. I will see you in class.